All right. <laughs> Ten years ago, I'm doing dinner theater in Mississauga, Ontario. Elton John and many others, it's fantastic dinner theater. I'm making $1,200 a week, which is really, really good. And everything changes, though. Uh, my, light, my phone lights up right before the curtain call. So five minutes after the show's over, I find out that my father has passed away suddenly, unexpectedly, from a heart aneurysm, and he's 60 years old. And this event changed my life forever. I want to stand up here and tell you that I, uh, through the morning, I wanted to travel the world, live life to the fullest like this bro. But my heart wanted me to work harder. And that is so lame. It's not inspirational, but that's what my heart was telling me. And it took me years to figure out why. So I'm going to go back. I was an actor all my life grew up being an actor, and when I graduated high school, my father lightly suggested that I should get a degree to fall back on. I thought it was a good idea. And so I went into business school. And business school, I was the kid who was making commercial presentations for finance class. I was winning speech contests, losing accounting finals. <laughs> and when I graduated, everybody got real jobs. And I followed my dreams, and I became a full-time actor. So what you're going to see here is an image of some uh, career highlights for me. The first one, I played a multiple variety of roles in The Lord of the Rings, the musical. There was a Lord of the Rings musical. It was a $35 million epic flop. And I played many different things in the show, including a dancing orc. And then I reached my career dream. I was on the Stratford Festival stage, dressed as a woman in front of 2,200 people. <laughs> it was my dream. And uh, 10 years after that dinner theater, I was once again making $1,200 a week. And something about it felt safe to me. Here I was living out my dream, but I felt safe and I needed to take risks. I learned that life was short. So I left my dream job at the Stratford Festival. I headed back to Vancouver in order to make movies with my business partner, creative partner, Kyle Rideout. We had no idea how to make movies. And this wasn't Hollywood, this was the Vancouver indie film scene. So we had no money, so we had to learn how to do everything. We were budgeting, scheduling, doing the accounting, doing, helping with the legal, doing contracts. We, we carried all of our equipment up to the top of the chief and shot shots at the top of the chief. I was even elected um, animal wrangler on the film. So we had a llama, we had uh, two goats, we had a couple of pigs, we had a dog, we had a horse, we had a turtle. Let me tell you, never try and wrangle a llama. It's not going to work. They're terrible actors too, so don't even bother working with them. And it was very stressful, but even though I didn't get paid for two years until the tax credit came in, it was all worth it. And the film was a critical success. It's played all over the world. It's won lots of awards. And then Kyle and I started to get real job offers in Vancouver, servicing other stuff. But again, that didn't feel right. We wanted to take the risks. We wanted to see how far we could take our own projects. So then we made our next film, which was called Adventures in Public School. It started Judy Greer, Russell Peters, Grace Park, Andrew Bang, Daniel Doney, Siobhan Williams. It was a lot of risk. But uh, we felt like we, we just needed to keep seeing how far we could take our own projects. And again, this is starting to sound Hollywood, but it's not. This is Vancouver indie film scene. So we were still doing a lot of the things ourselves. We were driving trucks. Um, I was trying to get second ACs for uh, half of what they were getting as like a fifth AC on a Ryan Reynolds certain movie shooting at the same time. But again, it's all worth it. We uh, took the film to TIFF. We sold it at TIFF. I was uh, still at the same time as we were shooting these films, I was still gigging at the backstage lounge, making $100 a night, singing for the UBC uh, frat and sorority kids all night with a funk band. But it was really worth it. We, we made it to TIFF. Um, we sold the film to Netflix. We played TIFF Top 10 all over the world. We sold this film. And I got to party with uh, Russell Peters, who was wearing a 
salmon suede suit. It was glorious, the suit. And again, we got offered better jobs now. To stay in Vancouver, we could have taken these real jobs. And again, we were like, no, how far can we take our own projects? Let's see, take these risks. So then we started spending 100 hours pro bono on a pitch. And then we take these pitches down to LA. We would, you know, do it all on our own dime. We would drive for an hour, park for half an hour, pitch for an hour, drive for an hour, park for half an hour, pitch for an hour, on and on and on, all week long, totally exhausting. And then we'd crawl home and we have sold some stuff to studios. I was hoping that I would be able to announce it here. It's a blank slide, so I'm not allowed to announce it yet, but that's coming. And it was all about that risks that we took. And what I think is important is during all this, while I felt a ton of stress, I was satisfied by what I was doing. And when you feel like that, when you're happy, you meet your wife. And that's my wife, she's the tall one. She's a UBC master's grad. So speaking here is like a way bigger excitement for her than anything Hollywood. And when you're satisfied like that, you decide you should go out and get a dog. It's my dog, I graduated too. I just wanted to put a picture of my dog up there. This is what you can take from this. This is what I hope to impart, is that when my father passed away, I learned that I wanted to work harder because I love what I do. And I just think that it's so important to, you know, not just think about money. Money will come, but to take risks, to follow your heart, and then everything else sort of comes together as you do it. And when all that happens, you too could be the only commerce grad to play a dancing orc on stage. <laughs> and that's coming up here. That's my family. A little one there. So thank you very much. <laughs>